Let's try out another wonderfully created problem from 2014 Stanford Math Tournament. And we have this function f satisfying x equals to f of x times e to the f of x. And we want to calculate integral from 0 to e of f of x dx. Now this is pretty awkward because we have x in terms of f of x, not the other way around. So how do we even how do we even think about integrating this? So essentially, we have x equals to y times e to the y, and we want to integrate this with respect to x from 0 to e. Huh. I'm not quite sure where to go. Obviously, trying to find inverse, trying to write y as some function of x, from this is going to be a pain. I, I don't even know where to start, and I don't think that's going to be any fun. So, ah, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. Well, one thing I do see is that if this thing was integral from 0 to e of y e to the y dy, so instead of dx, if we had dy and we were integrating this y times e to the y, then this is extremely easy because we know how to integrate y times e to the y, so we know how to compute this. But that's not what we have. We have integral with respect to x. What do we do? Well, we know how to integrate this with respect to y, so if we have our function f, let's say it goes something like this, we know how to find the area with respect to y, we know how to find the area between the function and the y-axis, so we know how to find that, that's this thing. But that's not what we want to find, we want to find this area. But wait a bit, they seem to make up a rectangle. Does it have to make up a rectangle though, because if our function, if our function is going like wiggly, like this, then obviously the area under this function, right here, but between the graph and the y-axis, now this thing becomes awkward. How do we even represent area? Because this thing does not have an inverse. But in our case, we don't have something like this. We have y times e to the y. And we know e to the y is an increasing function. And we know y is an increasing function as y gets very, very large, as y increases. As y increases, we know y increases and e to the y increases, so we know this entire thing should increase. So we know our graph looks something like this. As y goes up, our graph goes to the right. Graph increases. Aha, and this is giving us an idea. If we can find the area of the entire rectangle, and then we can simply integrate this with respect to y, and we know how to integrate this with respect to y, we can simply take that away from the entire rectangle to find this area. Okay, now we know something to shoot for. So let's actually make a bigger diagram and see if we can actually find this. So we know our function is increasing, so let's draw it something like this. And we want to find this area, in area from 0 to e. So this area is what we want to find. To begin with, do we know what this value is? Do we know what value should go right here? Well, when x is equal to e, we have e equals to y e to the y. And it's pretty obvious that when y is 1, we have the equality. When y is 1, we have 1 times e to the 1, which is of course e. So we know this has to be 1. And now we know how to find this red area. We know how to find this red area. That's simply integral from 0 to 1. Integral from 0 to 1. Integral from 0 to 1 of y to the y dy. So we can find this red area. And we know area of the entire rectangle is e times 1 or e. Because we have e and 1. So we want to find e minus this and then we should be done. Okay. Now we know where to go. So how do you anti-differentiate y times e to the y? One way is to use integration by parts, that's one way. Or you may realize that when we differentiate y times e to the y, when you differentiate this, so let me go down a bit, when you differentiate this, you get, you get y e to the y plus e to the y. But we cannot have this extra e to the y. We want to find a function that when we differentiate, we get y times e to the y, not y times e to the y plus e to the y. Well, easy solution. Just take away e to the y. Because now when you differentiate this entire thing, you get y to the y plus e to the y minus e to the y, which means we should get y e to the y as we need. So we know how to anti-differentiate this. So now let's integrate it from 0 to 1. And we quickly get 
For 1, we have e to the 1 minus e to the 1, which is of course 0. When you plug 0 into it, we get 0 times e to the 0, this obviously goes away, minus e to the 0, or 1. And e minus e, this thing is going to be 0. And we have negative negative 1, which is of course plus 1. So we know this integral is 1. So in the end, we have e minus 1. The area of the entire rectangle is e, and the area between, between this graph and the y-axis is 1. So the area we're looking for is e minus 1. So we know, we know this integral, we know this integral is equal to e minus 1.